Alright, hey guys, in this video I'll be explaining the concept of three pricing model in finance and I'll be going over a few practice questions as well for you guys to understand how it works. So basically, repricing model is one of the two ways that banks can use to measure interest rate risk. The other being the duration model, but that'll be covered in another video. For this video, we'll just be going over repricing model. So when we say uh, measure interest rate risk, um, interest rate risk is simply the risk a bank faces if interest rates were to go in a direction that's unfavorable for the banks. So if interest rate goes up, is that a good or a bad thing for a bank? And same if they go down, is that good or bad? Well, it depends. It depends on something called the repricing gap, which we'll cover very shortly. So what the repricing model does is it measures a bank's net interest income exposure to interest rate changes in different maturity buckets. So, a few key words here. When we firstly, when we say maturity buckets, we just mean we choose different time frames or planning horizons to measure these exposures. Like for example, we could measure the interest rate risk of our assets once every year, or every quarter, or every month, or even every 10 years. Um, banks will decide the optimal maturity bucket which they'll use, but how they decide this isn't something we'll cover in this course. And here's the formula for net interest income. So basically, delta NII equals RSA minus RSL times delta R. And uh, NII is just uh, net interest income. So we're finding the change in net interest income. Uh, RSA minus RSL is the size of the repricing gap. And delta R is just your change in interest rate. So before we dive deeper into this formula, I just want to cover the repricing gap in a bit more detail. Alright, so repricing gap, obviously we know it's RSA minus RSL, but what is RSA and what is RSL? So RSA is your rate sensitive assets. Basically any assets that will have a relatively big impact on a bank's income if there are changes in interest rates. And what they are, they are a bank's short-term assets and floating rate assets. So for example, we can have short-term loans, T-notes, floating rate long-term notes, etc. Similarly with your RSL, they are rate-sensitive liabilities. They're the bank's short-term liabilities and floating rate liabilities, you know, pretty much the same as uh, rate-sensitive assets. You might notice in the examples for rate sensitive assets and rate sensitive liabilities that we say floating rate long term loans or debts are classified as rate sensitive even though we just said that they they only include short term right so as long as anything is floating rate that still makes it rate sensitive so if in this course you just need to worry about um, floating rate and fixed rate if something is classified as floating rate, no matter if it's short term or long term, it's always going to be rate sensitive. On the other hand, if you have fixed rate, it's obviously never going to be rate sensitive. Now the other examples are quite straightforward. You've got short term loans, which is obviously a short term asset. You've got T-notes, which is also a short term asset. And for liabilities, you've got term deposits, which is short term. You've got CDs, which are also short term. So really, the, the most tricky part is just you need to know whether these assets and liabilities are short-term or long-term. But the question will usually tell you if they're fixed rate or floating rate. And these are two key relationships to note. If your rate-sensitive assets is greater than your rate-sensitive liabilities, there is a positive gap, and that means that the bank is exposed to a risk of interest rate decrease. If, uh, if RSA is less than your RSL, so if you have less rate-sensitive assets than rate-sensitive liabilities, then there is a negative gap, and it means that the bank is exposed to a risk of interest rate increase instead. We'll cover repricing gaps more in, in depth in the next video, but the gist is that repricing gaps are very important for banks because banks need to constantly adjust their repricing gaps to make it either more positive or more negative depending on their forecasted interest rate changes. So going back to this formula, since you know what 
um, three pricing gap sort of means now. We'll go through a few of these uh, example questions. All right, so first example, calculate repricing gap and impact on net interest income if interest rates increase by 1% and RSA equals $100 million and RSL equals $50 million. All right, so let me just get my uh, notepad up. Okay, so all we need to do is calculate pricing gap and the impact on net interest income, right? So starting off, uh, recall the formula for net interest income. It's simply change in NII equals to RSA minus RSL times change in interest rate. So this is your repricing gap, right? So you obviously need to calculate the repricing gap in order to find the net interest income anyway. So let's start with this. RSA minus RSL is just 100 million minus 50 million. So this is your rate sensitive assets minus rate sensitive liabilities. And this is just obviously $50 million, right? So your repricing gap just equals to 50 million. And then to find NII, um, we need to times the change in interest rate, which is just 1%. And this will give you, uh, this will just give you $500,000. And this is your value for change in net interest income. So what's this value actually mean? Um, this is, this is good for a bank because, simply because the value is positive, right? Your net interest income is basically the money that the bank will earn as a result of um, changes in interest rates. So basically what we're saying here is because of this change, uh, this 1% change in interest rates, the bank has earned $500,000. Uh, since there's a positive gap, i.e. over here, uh, your repricing gap equals 50 million, right? Let me just quickly write that down. So this is a positive gap. And when we have a positive gap, we're worried about interest rates decreasing. But in this question, we said that, um, well, the question stated that interest rate increased by 1%. So this is a good thing. Now, what if RSA equals 50 million and RSL equals 100 million? So basically for part two, we have it the other way around for RSA and RSL. So let's do it again. Change in their interest rate uh, sorry, net interest income equals RSA. Well, you probably don't need the formula again. We can just go straight to 50 million minus 100 million. And the change in interest rate is still the same, so it's, to, it's just still 1%. Now, um, notice that the repricing gap is negative because 50 million minus 100 million gives you negative 50 million, right? Obviously, that's a negative value, so you've got a negative gap now. And doing the calculation, you get negative $500,000 instead. Now, this is this is bad, right? Because we have a negative gap, so we were worried about interest rates increasing, and in this case, it did increase. So that's why your uh, net interest income has also fallen and it's fallen by $500,000. That is quite a lot of money. Um, one thing just um, students get confused with, just because we have a positive gap here in part one, doesn't mean that it's always a good thing. So you might think, oh, it's a positive gap, so the result must be positive too, right? It's always gonna be a good thing. Well, not necessarily, because if you have a positive gap, you're worried about interest rates decreasing. So if the question told you that increase rate, uh, interest rates had fallen by 1% instead, then having a positive gap would be a bad thing, right? And whereas having a negative gap would be a good thing. Now notice how in both these questions, um, the repricing gap was quite large. You had repricing gap $50 million and negative $50 million, right? So both scenarios are quite risky for the bank. 
So let's think about this question. How can we change the values of RSA and RSL to minimize interest rate exposure? Pause the video if you want to think about it, but just to save time, I'll, I'll quickly tell you the answer straight away, okay? So the smaller the absolute value of the repricing gap, the lower the risk. So you can think about it like this. If we did another question where, for example, RSA was $50 million and RSA was also $50 million, then your, re your repricing gap would be zero, right? And so there will literally be no interest rate risk because there's no net interest income. Because if you do the calculation where repricing gap equals to zero, well, zero times whatever change in interest rate, it doesn't matter what the interest rate change is because it's always going to be zero times a number. And so your net interest income would also be zero. Although, obviously, it's always better to have a higher net interest income, right? Because you obviously want more money. But when we're talking about risk prevention, we obviously don't want to risk having a negative value for that interest income either. So we'd rather minimize the repricing gap so that your, your change in that interest income is small as well.